What's going on guys, John Alder here from Kodobi.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to scroll an entire app with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a scroll bar to your entire app with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codeme.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right guys, it is Friday here in Vegas, very excited. It's only supposed to be 108 degrees today. How about that? <laughs> so in this video, like I said, I'm gonna show you how to add a scroll bar that goes the entire length of your app. You can see I've got a whole bunch of buttons on here and uh, this scrolls. Now, a lot of people have asked me to do this over the last couple of years or so, and I haven't gotten around to it because it's actually kind of hard to do this. It's a, it really is sort of tricky to get this done. Uh, it's hard to scroll an entire app because most of the widgets don't inherently work with a scroll bar. You can use a scroll bar in a list box, for instance, um, but that's sort of it. And the only other thing that kind of inherently has the scroll bar capability is a canvas. So what we're gonna do is really kind of hack around and come up with a solution that allows us to put a scroll bar for our entire app. But uh, like I said, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. So uh, let's go ahead and close this and head over to our code. I've got a file I'm calling fullscroll.py. Uh, you can check this out in the uh, comment section below. There's a link to my GitHub account if you wanna look at the code. So it's just our basic Kinter starter code and we're gonna make this uh, 500 by 400. We've got our main loop. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So right off the bat, we're gonna need to use the scroll bar and that's a TTK widget. So let's just come up here and uh, while we're thinking about it, let's just import TTK right away. So let's go from tkinter, you probably want to spell tkinter right, uh, import ttk. Okay, so now, first off, let's just create all those buttons just to sort of get them on the screen. Now, I'm just going to use a basic for loop to do this, and I think we've done this in another video. So let's just go for, for i in, or let's go for uh, thing in range, and let's make a hundred of these guys, and let's create a button, and we want to put it in root for now. We'll change that in a bit. And we want the text to equal, let's make this an F string and let's go button. And then let's put the number of the button. So thing, uh, and then, uh, I don't know, yo. So button 27, yo, <laughs> right? And uh, all right, and now we can dot grid this and let's go row equals thing and then column equals zero. And let's give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, 10 and a pad X of 10. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and head over here. And this is Python full underscore scroll dot pi. So if we run this, we see we've got these buttons and they're all along the side here and button zero, yo, button six, yo. And if we kind of drag this down, we could see they keep going and going and going. And if we really played with this, we can uh, see that they go to a hundred, but, uh, they go to 100, so we could just leave it at that. So we want a scroll bar. What do we do? Well, let me just comment out sort of the steps we're gonna go through. So first we're going to create a main frame, right? That's gonna hold everything. And then we're gonna create a canvas, right? Then we're going to add a scroll bar to the canvas, right? Then we're going to configure the canvas to have the scroll bar. Then we're going to create another frame inside the canvas. And then finally, we're going to um, add that new frame to a window in the canvas. So we can't just put things in the, the canvas because it's the canvas, you know, we use it to draw things, but we can sort of draw a new window in the canvas and then in that window, put things. And it's all invisible, so it doesn't matter, but uh, this is sort of the, the steps we're gonna do. So you can see this is a little convoluted, especially for a Friday morning, but we're gonna try and, and make this work. So first things first, let's create our main frame. So let's just call this main frame because I'm very creative. And this is gonna be a frame and we're gonna put it in root, right? 
So then let's go main underscore frame, and we can just pack this on the screen. Now we want this to fill the entire size of our app. So we can go fill equals both, and then expand equals one. We've done this before to expand frames to the size of you know their container basically. So okay, that's our main frame. So now let's create a canvas. So let's go my underscore canvas equals, this is gonna be a canvas, and we've done these before, and we wanna put this in this main frame, right? That's why we created this main frame. So we put that in there, right? And then let's put this on the screen. So my canvas, let's pack this in there. And where do we wanna put this? We wanna put it on the side left. We wanna put it you know, right up to the left-hand side and then expand it out to fill the whole frame, right? So side left, fill equals both. And again, we wanna expand this. And we put one, if you put any number, it'll expand to the size of the thing. So we just always put one. So, okay, now we've got our canvas. That's not too tricky. So now we wanna create our scroll, bar, our scroll bar. So let's go my scroll bar. And this is going to be a ttk.scroll bar. And we've done these in the past. If you can check the playlist, the comment section below, there's a link to the playlist where we've added scroll bars to like uh, list boxes and things like that. If you want sort of a more in-depth look at scroll bars, you can check that out. So scroll bar, now where do we wanna put this? Now you would think we would put this in the canvas, but not yet. We wanna put it in the main frame right now, right? So we put it in the main frame, but we're going to set the Y scroll, which we'll talk about in a second, to the canvas, not to that main frame. So uh, let's go, we put it in the main frame and where do we wanna orient this? We wanna orient it vertically. So orient vertical, vertical means up and down. We want the scroll bar to go up and down, right? We don't want it to go side to side. So orient vertical, and now we wanna set the command for this guy to my underscore canvas dot Y view. And it's the Y view because it's gonna be vertical, up and down, that's the Y axis. If you're gonna do it horizontally, it would be the X view. And that's just the scroll bar thing. Like I said, check out the playlist if you wanna learn more about scroll bars. So again, we're putting the command on here to my canvas not my frame. We're positioning this thing in the frame, but we're kind of attaching it to the canvas. The canvas is the thing it's going to scroll basically, sort of, right? So, okay. So command my canvas dot Y view. Like I said, it's Y view is up and down vertical. And we gotta just like everything pack this guy. So let's go my scroll bar dot pack. And where do we wanna put this? Well, we wanna put it on the right side, right? because that's where our scroll bar, you know, is normally on the right side. And we wanna fill this to Y, the Y axis. We wanna fill it up and down all the way to the, the length of our container, in this case, uh, the canvas and the main frame. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Now we wanna configure the canvas. So we've sort of attached it, but now we need to set this, this Y view and the Y scroll bar command thing, right? So we can go my underscore canvas dot configure, right? And we can set the Y scroll command to, and now we need to just set, set this my scroll bar, right? The Y scroll command, which is the command that happens when you scroll a thing in the Y axis, we want that to it's sort of attach to my scroll bar dot set. We wanna set it, right? Again, this is just, you know, scroll bar stuff. So now this is a little bit different. We need to bind this thing. And we've worked with bindings in other videos. You can check the playlist. We've bound, you know, mouse button clicks. We've bound the enter thing. Now we wanna bind this configure thing, which is a little weird. So we go my underscore canvas dot bind and just kind of go with this, right? So like I said, we wanna bind. This is familiar. We always put those brackets in the thing we wanna bind. We wanna bind configure, right? And then what do we wanna do when we configure, when we scroll? Well, we want to run a function. So to do that, we always do, we always use lambdas, right? So lambda, but this is lambda E because remember with binding, we're always passing an event, an E, right? So when we click a mouse, that's a mouse event. So we wanna pass that event, that E, into this function and we wanna pass it into my underscore canvas dot configure and then we want to pass in the area 
that we want to scroll or the scroll region, right? And we want to set that equal to my underscore canvas dot B box. And then we want to pass into that all. And notice there's a bunch of brackets to close all this out. So a bunch of parentheses. So B box is a canvas thing. It sort of sets the it's a think of a B box as a bounding box, right? We're going to create a box around the canvas. And we're going to say scroll that whole box, basically. And then in a second here, we're going to set the actual coordinates for that, that B box, which we just want zero zero up at the top right corner, right? So okay, moving right along, let's now create another frame inside the canvas. And so let's call this, um, I don't know, second frame. And we've set this, this is going to be a frame. And where do we want to put this? We want to put this in the canvas. So my underscore canvas, right? So we don't need to pack this yet, because we're going to add it a different way than normal. We're not going to pack it on the screen. We're going to, like I said, add a new window to our canvas and then put it in that window, basically. So to do that, we, we do that right here, add that new frame to a window in the canvas. So let's go my underscore canvas dot create underscore window, which is a function. And now inside of here, we put another set of parentheses and we set the coordinates. Where do we want to put this? Where do we want to put this bounding box? Where does it start at? We want to put it at zero, zero, the top right corner, I think. And then what do we want to do? We want to set the window to second underscore frame, right? So we want to put this second frame that we just created in that window and start it at zero, zero, top right corner. I think it's the top right corner, right? <laughs> right. And then we also want to anchor set to uh, northwest. So north and west, that's the top right corner or zero, zero, right? But we want to anchor it. So uh, that's how that works. So okay, that might work. Now the only thing we need to change is our buttons, we don't want to put them in root, we want to put them in that second frame that we just created. So let's copy this and paste that. And I think yeah, it's looking good. I think that'll work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. If this works on the first time with all that code on a Friday, somebody owes me a beer or something. All right, so button yo, and we've got our our scroll bar, and woo it scrolls all the way down to 99. So from zero to 99, that is 100 buttons. They don't do anything, obviously, and it's just I, I just put buttons up there just to show you, just to have something that we could scroll. You know, uh, you would then you know create your stuff however you wanted to, right? Anything you wanted to put on the screen from now on would go in the second frame, right? Instead of putting, you know, if you wanted a label, if we went my underscore label, that would be a label. And then we would put it in second frame, right? And uh, the text would be, uh, it's Friday, yo, <laughs> right? And then we can dot grid this guy to row whatever, you know, three column two or something. I don't know, save it. Run it. It's Friday, yo, right? Whatever you want to do on your app, you would just then from now on, put the thing in second frame, second frame basically becomes your new route. I mean, it's not but for all intents and purposes, think of it as the main window from now on. And then everything in there will just get scrolled because this is all set up here to to work. So that's how you do scroll bars for an entire app. I really wish there was an easier way to do this for you guys. But there, there really just isn't uh, the, your first thought is why can't we just attach a scroll bar to a frame. And that's what I would have thought. But I don't know, it just doesn't work that way. Canvases are the thing that works with frames in Kinter besides list boxes. List boxes also work with frames, but we can't really make a list box the whole size of our app and then put things in it. That doesn't work. On the other hand, we can put things in the canvas. You can do just about anything with a canvas. You can draw, you can put other windows we're seeing, you know, right here. Uh, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a hacky way and it's kind of a workaround, but it works. 
And um, yeah, what are you going to do? So <laughs> anyway, that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Kodabee.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodabee.com, and we'll see you in the next video.